Hi, I'm Leon Poindexter, and here we are working on the Boston Tea Party ships. Uh, since the last time we met, we've been doing quite a bit of work on the ships. And uh, if we take a look around here, I'll show you what we've been up to. Well, as you can see, we finished the coppering job. The rudder, of course, is the last stage of the uh, work. And we've got it entirely sheathed here. This was done exactly like the hull with the, uh, with the tar and then the, uh, the felt and then the copper over. And uh, we finished using roughly about 22,000 nails. And as you can see, they're all nice e evenly spaced here. And if you look down here at the panel of gudgeon, we can see the work that we finished up. Uh, these have been peened over uh, just exactly as they did in the uh, 1700s. And this, of course, was led into the wooden rudder. Uh, this is the work that Joff did with the, uh, with the chisel and mallet. And uh, this is all fitted and blended in very nicely here now. Well, here's a good example of what can happen if you leave the wood unprotected. Uh, the copper, of course, keeps the worms away from it. And uh, this is a piece of planking that uh, is left over from actually doing some planking work on the vessel. But if it was left unprotected, it wouldn't take very long for it to become like this. Uh, this type of uh, worm damage is from a worm that we call gribbles. Uh, it's a very short, tiny white worm uh, that gets into the surface of the wood. The other type of worm that we've talked about is a Torito worm, uh, which is a longer, bigger worm that actually gets into the grain of the wood inside the surface and honeycombs the inside of the wood and can make it virtually hollow. In the 1700s, the copper cladding was the only method for protecting against worms. Of course, today we have copper bottom paint. Uh, bottom paint, the copper bottom paint was invented in 1860 and was right here in Gloucester. As a matter of fact, the first manufactory was right here on the same neck where the uh, shipyard is located. Uh, the copper bottom paint really only lasts about two to three years and we have to haul the boats and repaint them every so often. Not only is the copper cladding historically accurate, but even today it's the best way that we found to protect against worm damage on these type of vessels. The last step on doing the copper work is putting on the trim. Uh, the top edge of the copper is rather raw and so it needs to be finished with a trim piece. And this also keeps the, uh, the rainwater from coming down the side of the vessel and going into the first layer of copper. This rather strange portion of the bow of the beaver is what they call the beak head. And the beak head is the forward part of the stem. And on the top of that is a portion that we call the, uh, the billet head. Uh, the Quakers were not into figureheads. They didn't like to be ostentatious. So in this area here, there's going to be another piece of wood that will be attached here and we'll have a round scroll and there'll be some grape leaves and things that will be trailing off of that. Also from this particular point, from the back side of here, there's going to be some headrails and the headrails are going to be long graceful pieces that swing off of here and attach to various parts of the hull on the bow here. And these headrails and also some knees that were going to go in here were the support for this part of the vessel. And that's it for now from the Gloucester Marine Railways. Uh, the next phase of this project is working on the bulwarks on the other side of the vessel. So check in with us again and we'll show you some more progress on the Tea Party ships.